Well, hello, everybody. Can you hear me well? Wonderful. Well, the name of the talk, well, the name I gave to this talk is not exactly the one that was written down on the pages, but mine is little, well, say, not so explicit. It's a famous quote from Oscar Wilde, Sir Oscar Wilde. Be yourself, everyone else is already taken. So basically, if you have like a couple of minutes, that's the only thing I'm going to say to you. Because I want to explain it good, I will repeat it all over again during two hours with many examples. But that's the only message I will give to you today. So, hello everybody. A couple of instructions before to start these lectures. Well, first, you'll get all the slides I'm going to show you, okay? So I will put them later on on the slide share and you will be able to read them all over again. Plus, we're fortunate to have Hannah here that we can all upload. Thank you. We're going to capture all the movie of this and we'll post it on YouTube later on. So you will have plenty of time to rewatch it all over again, okay? Second thing, uh, it's not something that you will read in books because it's just a real story. It's my story, basically. So I hope it's not going to be too boring. I will do my best, okay, to make it entertaining. It's things which happened to me and that's a self-reflection which led me to this talk today in front of you and why I wanted to brought that to you because I think it's important, okay? So it's not the universal answers about everything, and it's only my opinion and my opinion only. First thing, I'm not an expert. I'm not a coach. I'm not an HR person. I'm not recruiting people, okay? So just, and uh, I'm not helping anybody to self-develop or things like this, which means that uh, if you have any question about yourself and your life and troubles that you would like to face and dreams you would like to do, you have plenty of people outside in the world who are going to take care of you. I'm not one of them. Okay, and this talk will not replace a proper like supervision with somebody who is fully equipped and whose job is to take care of these kind of issues. Okay, uh, is everybody understanding well when I talk? Is it fine? Is it fine? If it's not fine, please raise your hand because I tend to speak too fast. Okay, so just okay, you you just raise your hand and you say speak slowly. Okay, is good. Sweet. I also want to give you a warning because I already gave this talk last year in French. So this is an English version of the talk I gave last year. So if some people were there last year, they can stand up and leave now because they will not, le they will not learn tons of new stuff, I'm afraid. I want you to be careful because I received some message after this first talk, which led me to the consideration that I should make a warning section like this one. What do I mean? <clears throat> Outside in the world, there are evil mean people who are all selling the same stuff and that doesn't exist. What is this stuff? This stuff is a shortcut to success. It's a secret. That's a free S. A secret shortcut to success. And these people say if you listen to me now and you give me just a little bit money, you will learn a ton of useful stuff and you will get rich and wealthy and popular and everybody will love you and you will reach all your dreams. Okay? And you better not believe people like this. Okay? And I, I, I want to say that to you because there are plenty of them all over the internet these days and they are all offering just bullshit, basically. But people write to me and say, oh my God, you inspired me so much, Remy, thank you so much. And also I made this lecture of this guy and when I read the name of the guy, I'm like devastated because that's exactly the opposite of what I'm going to say to you. And the biggest problem is uh, I'm not as attractive and I can't make you such a promise that they are doing because my personal belief is there's no such thing as a shortcut to success, as a secret shortcut to success. Okay, so take care of this. I made you a chart because I love chart because I'm a nerd. So basically when you're facing a con man, somebody is revealing a private and unknown secret based on anecdote and stories like, oh, this time I know somebody who did that. It had worked for this person. You should believe it, which is a shortcut to something people want. Selling the story of his own transformation. I was like you before, but tomorrow. After you take my pills, after you take my class, after you take anything, you will become somebody else. Okay? So don't believe this. Uh, he sells you the hope of such a transformation tomorrow for yourself. He tells you how you're going to spread the world like he does and encourage you not to interact with people who might not believe into this story because they got bad vibes. And you should cut yourself from negative people who don't believe what you believe. Okay? So this is a scheme. Recognize this. Don't believe it. Thank you. What am I doing with you is exactly the opposite. Share some public and open knowledge, so nothing I will tell you is secret. 
Most of the things I'm going to tell you, there are always the sources, there are the books, there are everything, and you can refer it as well and read them. And if you find interesting stuff that I forget, please mail me and I will add it. Built on evidence-based observation and artifacts, relate on efficient demonstration. I'm selling nothing for the very last time. I'm just selling nothing at the end. Gives you actionable and free advices that you can use today. The purpose of these advices is not for you to come and to make the same conference one day. And I want you to confront these ideas and believe with facts and evidence and other people. That's what I'm going to incitate you to do during the next two hours. That's the reason why I'm here. Also, I don't know everything and I'm only myself, which means that I like. I'm a privileged white male guy. There's plenty of difficulties and trouble I never faced and I will never face. So I will never have the idea about all the obstacles that other people can meet. And I just don't say, do that, it's easy, it works in every case. There are plenty of other issues and troubles and I will not cover them because I don't have the legitimacy, I don't feel legitimate enough to do it. Are we fine? Yeah. Wonderful. So, <clears throat> it's an interactive conference. What does that mean? There will be a couple of exercises all along the talk and I will encourage you to think about it and to write down your answers. And that will be a micro period of time, like one minute, two minutes, that we will take, and you will write down stuff. Why so? Because if I say, do it tonight when you will go home, you will say, of course we will do it. <laughs> and we will do it? Nobody, okay? So we will do it right now. That's why I'm here. Please feel free to interact. What I suggest to you is like, I try to give the lecture in a minimum amount of time, and we take the maximum amount of questions at the end, and for the people who want to stay, there is a workshop even after. The workshop will be in French. So if people here don't speak French, well, don't stay for the workshop because I will go too fast and you will not follow anything. Are we good? Super enthusiastic people, motivated, are we good? Yeah! yeah! <laughs> Why am I doing this conference today? That's the first question I ask myself. And I have to admit that I make this lecture because I did basically tons of stuff I shouldn't have done, but in the end it was a good story. So this is me, when I was like 20, like you. So this is me, by the way, in 2003, so you can laugh hard because that will happen to you sooner or later. <laughs> and this is me today, and in between there are 15 years. And during these 15 years, a lot of things happened to me, a lot of things I didn't thought about, didn't things I couldn't know would happen, okay? So, a couple of examples, when I was 18, that was the final year of high school, and I was like, super anxious, and I was asking myself hard questions about what am I supposed to do with my life? I don't know. Oh, my God. And uh, I almost failed my baccalaureate, as we say in French. So I got it like by two points or something like this. And I had no clue and no idea at all about what I was supposed to do with my life. So I went into this class préparatoire in France okay, to prepare for the business school. And of course, it didn't work at all, so I quit it. Okay, so after six months, I just say, well, it's not for me. I will not go in business school later. No, no, it's not for me. I just left. This year also, I had my driving license after the five trial, okay? So I, I got it on the fifth trial, okay? So I was not good with exam. I was like a super stressed young man. I was not enthusiastic at all. I had a lot of troubles. I failed. We all do fail a lot of stuff. It's good to remember everything we failed. And so I was like perplexed considering the option I had facing my life. And then finally, after I left the class préparatoire and I had basically nothing else to do for the rest of the year, I had some good tests. My mother was very fine with me that she led me to somebody and I had a couple of orientation tests I didn't take uh, so far. And the person said to me, well, you're good with words, you're a good communicator, you should study things like uh, advertising and marketing, you're going to like that. And I went into a BTS, so a two years, like a bachelor's study, basically a bachelor's degree. And so this is me. In 2007, you can love hard because that will happen to you sooner or later. And uh, at the end of the bachelor degree, I was like super enthusiastic and uh, just I thought about a very old question, which was what am I supposed to do with my life? And I had still no idea at all because I was too uh, occupied to do my homework like everybody told me to. And I went into a big giant theme music festival and I met Heva and that was beautiful and that was the beginning of an amazing romance. And finally, where was Eva living? Rennes. And so that's how I discovered the city and I thought to myself, well, I like this city. I definitely should find an occasion to stay within this city because that might be good. So I went and I made the passerelle concours and I joined the RSB and then you can say, oh my God, and they married after all and everything and fireworks in the sky. Hello, sir. Hello. And of course, not at all. Not at all. We broke up just after I've been admitted to the school, like a couple of weeks after. <laughs> so I was not happy at all, but I was in Rennes. And so I said to myself, well, let's enjoy it. Let's see what this school has to give. 
and it led to 2010, so I'm the end of Rennes. And I'm still asking the same question. Okay, I've been through all these exams, I've done everything I was supposed to do, but what am I supposed to do with my life after all? What kind of job am I supposed to do? And then Magali Leclerc, which is a super girl, uh, she was into my promotion, she was a P17 as well, and uh, she made um, a barbecue for her birthday, and I came to this barbecue and we were both drunk, and she said, Remy, I'm internship in HR into a big company, you definitely should go there, there are good stuff for you. And so I say, well, maybe, and I gave my curriculum and I didn't thought about it, and six months after they call me and they say, well, there are tests, you should come to see what would happen. And that's basically how I joined Microsoft. And so, I went into Microsoft and that was pretty cool, pretty amazing experience. So I was into a program for young graduated and uh, just we went all over the world and been coach and made a tons of party and that was super fun. But the job in itself was not so exciting. The company was, but the job in itself was like very procedural. I was expected to do what I was supposed to do, what people told me to do, okay? Not a lot of space for initiative, okay? I have to, I have to be a good soldier. And I'm not a real good soldier. I'm not this kind of person. And so, one day I woke up and just Microsoft told me, oh, in the night, we made the chart of the organization and uh, we removed a couple of positions and uh, we should talk to you by the break. <laughs> and that's how I learned that my position and my work disappeared within the organization overnight. And so that one day you wake up and you learn that your job doesn't exist anymore. And well, that was not the easiest time of my life, I have to confess. But in the process, uh, like uh, we were, uh, there were consultants to help us uh, in order to find new opportunities. And I met Sophie. Sophie is amazing, she's a friend today. And uh, she helped me for the first time maybe of my life to really take the time to think about myself. And that was a very strange feeling because in the same time, the world was collapsing and I was losing my job and I didn't know what I was supposed to do and I was in big like inner trouble and doubts. What am I supposed to do after all? Was it a good idea? I don't know. And in the same time, I was finally taking the time to deeply think about who I was when I was not in my job. Who I was after all. Why, why, what I was excited about, what do I want it to do? And so she told me, you like to conceive new stuff. You like to launch new projects. You like to help people to formalize things and make them true. You definitely should study design, considering study design, and that's how I went into a design school and had this radical relooking, which was pretty fun. And I went through the design school and that was super interesting because everything we learned here was good, but if I could combine it and mix it with the new stuff, then something else occurred. And I just realized that there was opportunity for me to make a special kind of job, a job that for which people would pay me to do things I would love to do. And that was pretty intense. And I met Matthias Abramovich, that some of you have met here. And uh, we partnered, we became uh, business partners, we launched a, a consulting company. And today that's five years in a row that we are working together with clients and we are helping them basically to build stuff, to build companies, to launch new business and new initiatives within the company. That's what we do. And today is 2019. Why do I tell you all that? Because if we take a moment and you take this bold gentleman here and you put it in front of his inner self 15 years ago and you say, guy, in 15 years you will have your own company, you will just go facing your clients and you will have to design the kind of things you sell and you will have to deliver stuff and you will have to earn money and have an accountant and just this guy here, he doesn't believe you. This guy here is saying, you're crazy, I'm anxious, I don't know what I'm supposed to do, I don't know who I am, I will never be able to do that. And he's right. Because when I was 18, of course, I wasn't able to do that. Everything came little by little, step by step, through a series of experiences. I'm here today because nothing went according to plan. I'm here today because nothing occurred the way I thought it would occur. Like this will probably happen to you. You probably have like tons of vision and things you want to experiment later on, and things will move and you will have to adapt and change. And that's part of the game. Of course, I'm here because I worked. I'm here because I made tons of decisions, but there are also three other ingredients pretty important into the reason why I'm here. We're gonna let the people just have a share, please. Be my guest. <laughs> you two people, come here, come here, have a seat. We have empty seats all over here. 
And during this time, I'm going to tell a joke. Or maybe not. Please have a seat. So of course I worked, of course I took decision, but also what's important in three other things, like in the mix, we are very intense and important, and I couldn't just have an impact on this, which are the encounters, the people I met. People I met defined me, people I met gave me opportunities. Opportunities to contribute, to test new stuff, to learn new stuff, and to finally discover that there were other things that I believe, that I loved. And there were also tons of mistakes. Ton of choices that I've made, tons of things that I chose to do, which weren't good ideas. But I don't like mistakes, because mistakes sounds like it was a right, wrong thing to do. So I prefer to talk about experiments. Experiments, opportunities to do stuff and to learn about yourself if it was a good idea or not to do it. What you should remember today is very easy, and that's a very short message. We all have a temptation especially when we are like uh, just out of school, because it's a brand new, different world that we're facing, that we would like to understand the model, we would like to understand the blueprint, we would like to understand where do we fit here, which cog we are, the system, where are we supposed to go next, what is the next instruction, what is the next opportunity, where are we supposed to go now. And nobody can bring you this answer for a very specific and simple and stupid reason. This reason is, there is nobody else in the world like you. That's stupid. You're the only person like yourself which is existing at this precise moment of the mankind story, in this context. You are somebody with your capacities, with your patience, with what you like, with what is important for you, and nobody else, instead of you, can know what you're supposed to do. People can give you advices, people can give you recommendations, but nobody can give you a proper set of instruction with, if you want a successful life, do that, then do that, then do that, because nobody knows what is important for you. You're the only person in the world who knows deeply what's important for you. And this, you will have to take it into consideration, because that will guide you through the process. And nobody else, people will give you advice, people will give you a lot of things, but nobody will give you the solution, because you will give the solution to yourself. It's quite a disturbing thought, mostly because about the way we were educated. When we were educated, when we've been through the school process, the school system, we might tend to consider things like if it was a stairway. So you go into a class, okay, and the next step is obvious. The next step is you take the test, and if you got the grades, you go to the next class. And then the next step is obvious. You take the test, and if you got the good grades, you go to the next class. And that's pretty much what we've all been doing for the first 25 years of our life. Okay, we've been into rooms, we've set up rules, explain, and instructions, and we are doing stuff which we're expecting from us to do. So we are good pupils, good students, we delivered the good grades, people say you worked well, we had high marks, and we went to the next grade, and to the next level, and again, and again, and again, and again. And it's tempting to think that life, like, is this stairway, and that we might go one step after the other one, like if it was already written, but the fact it is not. It can be. Because nobody already experienced the life you're going to live. You, you, very you, will experience the life you're going to live. And nobody else has already done it. People will give you advice and recommendations, but nobody knows what's your next step. You only can know. So that's why I tend to consider life as something much more organic, than a, like a tree, for example. And what's interesting with a tree, according to me, is two things. The first thing is, when you take a tree, a small tree, it's not like a small version of the big tree it will become. Okay, a baby tree is not like a finalized version which is gained into width and length. That's not how it works. What works instead is, depending the kind of environment you put it into, it will take different shapes, it will resist to different things, it will learn different stuff, because the, envir the environment around it will shape it as well as it is shaping itself. The second thing, which is interesting about trees, is the roots. Because there are two parts in the trees. There are the part we see, the part we grow, and there is a part that we don't see, the roots. And what does that mean? It means that the tree is not something that waits to have all the roots in order to grow. What happens? A tree is there, it grows, and then the root grows, and so it can grow higher, and the roots grow deeper, and then it grow higher and deeper. And this is a continuous process, and that's, according to me, a perfect definition of what will happen to you. 
You will not go out prepared. You will never be prepared. All your life, you will wait for the moment you will be prepared. Let me reassure you that that moment will never happen. You will never feel ready enough. You will just try new stuff and you will learn new stuff and you will have new opportunities and then it will lead to new stuff and new opportunity and new learnings and that's a continuous cycle all along the way. Now you're going to tell me I don't like this guy. And you should. You should. Because you say, well, this three stuff about building myself, that's good, but where is my ladder to success? Where is my written path? Where, what is the next logical instruction I'm supposed to do? What is the way that I can be 100% sure that I'm going to succeed into what I want to do? How, do? how will you choose what to do with your life? How do I choose what to do? If that's my responsibility to grow, if that's my res responsibility to go after the right opportunities for me, how am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to choose what I will do with my life? And that's a very good question, and I would like to rephrase it with you. What do I need to experience fulfillment in my life? And that's interesting because it's not about success. It's about fulfillment. And there are tons of stuff that we can take into consideration because scientists have been studying human psychology for long enough now to come to a certain number of conclusions and I would like to share some of them with you. Is everybody following me? I'm talking good? Yes. Wonderful. But first I need your help and I will ask you a very simple question which is not so simple to answer but that's your responsibility. So please take a blank sheet of paper and a pen and answer to the following question. Ooh, test. Ooh. And the question, and the question is the next one. What do you expect from your future job? Don't limit yourself to five stuff. Write down the maximum number of things you think about, about what you expect from your future job. Well, that should be good. So I'm glad because we all wrote down the same thing basically, right? So we're all gonna say it together because we're in a business school after all, okay? So be clear. What's the most important thing in life is? Money. Money! No, of course. No, of course, that's not what you wrote down. <laughs> so, a very first interesting theory. A very first interesting theory is given to us by Herzberg. And Herzberg, define what he called the two factors theory, which is a very good theory about human motivation. Hesbert said we understood it wrong because we didn't define properly the original statement. What motivates people? And what's funny is when you ask to people to talk to you about their job, what they do, what they like, you can take everything they say and you can basically divide them into two categories. Okay? The first category is is uh, what is that called the hygiene factors. What it is? Hygiene factors is the status, the compensation, the job security, the work conditions, the company practices, basically, the recognition of your peers for your job, plus all the material and immaterial um, rewards which are given to you in order for you to deliver your job. But there are also another kind of motivational factors. He calls them the motivators. What is it? He say. People like when the work is challenging. People don't like to know in advance everything they're going to do. People like to face new challenges and try new stuff. People like to be recognition not because of their role or status or position or job title. People like to be recognized for their contributions into something and people say, wow, thank you for what you did. That was good. We like that. People want to have responsibilities. They want to feel responsible about what they do. They want to feel that they have a direct incidence into what they are performing. People want to feel personal growth. People want to feel themselves evolving, taking more and more stuff, trying new stuff around, feeling more and more confident into what they are trying to do. And what's funny when you think about it is uh, there are a couple of situations which are pretty unusual when you think about it. Well, first, there are people in the world that have low motivators and low hygiene factors, so not a good plan. There are few people in the world as well that got good hygiene factors and good motivators, and that's perfect. But there are also two other kind of people that we can ask ourselves questions about. First people are people with good hygiene factors, okay, so they got wealthy payroll, okay, 
They are recognized for what they do. They got important titles. They work into important company, okay? And they wear suits and everybody takes them very seriously, okay? And after all, they have a good job security. They are good with their life. And in the same time, they're asking themselves, do I feel fulfillment when I do my work? Okay, I got all of this, but do I feel good? Do I feel happy to do what I do? And in the same time, and it's very funny, there are places where people that have like the lowest hygiene factors you may think about, but they're like super motivated to do it. Like in NGOs, for example. So into organizations where people are barely paid, they work all the time, all the time, okay? They are like, they live far away from the workplace, but they say, I'm doing something which is meaningful for me. So I don't have the right condition to do it, but I feel it's important and I'm proud to contribute. And that's very funny when you think about it, because that means that after all, money is necessary. I don't say that money has nothing to do with happiness. A little bit of money might help a lot, of course, but money is not enough. Money will bring you a certain level of joy and satisfaction. And after a certain period of time or a certain amount, you will find the other sources of satisfaction elsewhere, uh, elsewhere, mostly into the motivators things. There is also a theory I love, which is the self-determination theory, which has been studied by these two guys, are Australian, for like 30 years. And what's funny is that after having identified people and tell them about what motivated them and why they were motivated about doing what they did, they made four clusters of basically what they thought was the most important things to take into consideration about the motivation of people. Mastery, autonomy, connection, and purpose. The mastery is your inner self-satisfaction about what you do. The mastery is the more you do the stuff, the more you feel good about it, and the more you can appreciate the talents you're developing and the inner feeling of getting it. You get it. Okay, that's mastery. You, you master your subject. You feel your growth and your evolution. Autonomy is the appreciation of people coming to you and saying, we need you to deliver this. We have these resources. Deal with it. And then nobody come and micromanage you, you know, just watching your computer screen or like working next to you like this and seeing what you write all day long, you know? You don't like that. Autonomy, people like to organize themselves. They like to deliver stuff when they want to and the way they want to. Connection, you want to be socially emulated. You want to be to an environment with people which will respect you and that you respect. And you want to have the peer learning feeling. You want to, people to motivate you, give you stuff, to give them back stuff. And purpose, purpose is very interesting. <clears throat> Let's imagine, for example, that I pay you $10,000 for a report and you spend six months of your life doing this report and you're doing perfectly well because that's so important for you. And the D-Day, I take your report, okay, and I put it into the shredder, okay, so I destroy it in front of your eyes. And I haven't read it, okay, and I paid you for that. There are good chances that I'm going to demotivate you a lot because you will say, well, of course I worked well, but nobody will ever appreciate my work because it was for nothing. Purpose is a feeling of contributing to something bigger. You work, and in the end, you contribute that something else, something bigger than you happen. These four factors, I like them. And honestly, if you read back all the answers you gave, there's a lot of chance that if you write down them all again, you will have mastery, autonomy, connection, and purpose within the first answers that you gave about the appreciation of your job. Because that tends to be things that we are looking at as human people in order to be happy. And there is a third notion I would like to tell you about called the flow. I don't know if some people are familiar with the flow here. If somebody has ever heard about the flow, or is everybody super shy? One, one person did. Congratulate her. So, flow. The flow is a notion defined by somebody who has an unpronounceable name, like Miali, Sing Sing Si Miali, okay? I did my best, he was Hungarian. And what did he realize, Miali? He said, <coughs> the flow state, also known colloquially as being in the zone, is the mental state of operation in which a person performing an activity is fully immersed in a feeling of energized focus, full involvement and enjoyment in the process of the activity. In essence, flow is characterized by complete absorption in what one does and the resulting loss in one's sense of space and time. So that's a big definition for something we all experienced once here, which is this moment that you are like so absorbed into what you're doing 
that you like, you know, you just rise up your head of the computer and you say, oh my God, it's already five. What happened? Where all this time went? And you were so concentrated and into it and doing it was like a reward in itself. You appreciated it too much. You were like super concentrated, super focused and you didn't see the time by, okay? And that's extraordinary because it can be about anything basically, but it means that there are some kind of activities that you like so much that they are a retribution in themselves. Doing it for the purpose of doing it is like a reward. That's the flow state. Basically, it happens when you are facing something that you don't know yet how you will do it. It's close to what you know how to do already. And you have a high skills in order to solve it. And you are in the zone up here. If I give you only things that you don't know how to do and I give you the means to do it, you're into the anxiety zone, of course, because you don't know what you're supposed to do, so you're a total freak out, okay? And if I give you only things that you know how to do, well, you're totally relaxed because there's no such thing as a challenge. You're not asking yourself questions about will it work, will it not work? So the flow is this moment evolving through time, of course, because the better you become, the harder the challenge becomes. When you are like doing stuff, you're not sure that it's gonna work, but you know that if you do enough effort, it will. And that's this moment when you feel like super energized. And with these three things in our head, let's go back to our initial question. How do I choose what to do with my life? Well, it happens that Miali, Skizan Miali, had an answer in one of his books, an answer I loved a lot, and I'm here to deliver to you, so it's not my personal opinion, that's him. In time, I hope, it will become clear to everyone that to be alive means not just to survive in good physical health, not just to become a successful, respected citizen who does everything that is expected from him by society. To really live means to be able to express one's unique individuality, to hunt one's strength to the limits, while becoming fully part of the human network and contributing to it. And that's, uh, I call, that's what I call a very good definition of what a happy life might be. Because there's no such things as game and rules and things written in advance that you should do in order to be sure to get what you want. Because that doesn't work this way. Because it's all about you. It's all about your own ability to go into the right places, seeking for the right experiences in order for you to deliver yourself the happiness you need. It's all about you knowing so much about what you like and what you need to feel good and finding other people to share that and then will lead to opportunity and to things you will do eventually for a living. And I'm here for you to take this into consideration and then to maximize all the opportunities for you to find this spot. Because, yeah, I know. <laughs> because, of course, there is a common misbelief, a misconception about the fact that we might be somebody else when we are not at work, and when we are at work, suddenly we, we put a suit on and suddenly we become somebody else and we stop being ourselves. And that's stupid, don't do that. I tried to do that for four years, it doesn't work. You really don't want to do that. What you want is to take your inner self and your personality at work and you want to be appreciated for who you are and you don't want to play to be somebody else. What you want is to be in a place where you're appreciated for who you are because that's what you have to bring to, your, to this and that's what they want from you. This inner expression of you, the best of you that you have to bring in order to deliver what people need. Maybe you're ready to that example. So when I was here, like, uh, oh my God, well, long time ago, <coughs> uh, I was into an association like most of you did. So mine was Decibel, which is obviously the best association ever. And I got the mic, so end of the story. And when I was in Decibel, because I joined at the AST2, I met some people who already were into the association. And the first people was Pierre Lafitte. And uh, he was, uh, he's today uh, okay, into finance business and finance mastery about companies. So it was Anne Polos, which is today in charge of a company. So it's Christophe Miller, which is like recruiting students all around the world and like motivating them into projects. And this Loing, which is a HR people, a headhunter, and is seeking for profiles. And then you say to me, what's the point? So I want to introduce you, of course, the treasurer of the association, 
In fact, the only guy who was willing to deal with finance and accounting into the association. I want to introduce you, of course, the project coordinator, always in time, always straightforward, perfect executive, valedictorian of the promotion. I want to introduce you the leader of the association, always feeling neat, always smiling, always ready to drive the team to success. And I want to introduce you the guy who actually recruited me within the association. What do I want to say to you? These four people were already doing their work. These four people were already doing their future work. They just didn't know it yet. So when they had the opportunity to contribute to a project like an association, they just took naturally the kind of stuff they liked to do, and they did it. And today, they are fortunate enough to have jobs, which is pretty much what they already liked to do within the association. They didn't change. They just kept on being who they like, who they are, doing what they like. And eventually, they ended up in a job which is pretty close from what they like to do already. So you already know which kind of job you like, because that's already the things you do. Because you are already this kind of person. But that's what we're going to see in a couple of slides. And now you're going to tell me, OK, I mean, I'm tempted to believe you after all. That's maybe super freaking and scary. But maybe there is no such thing as a job predefined for me. Maybe there are not a written down, written down manuals that I'm supposed to follow. But then, how do I find the perfect job for myself? So how? Well, that's a bad question. I suppose that you should be designing the perfect job for yourself. Why so? If you are a unique person, and if you've got a special set of skills, and if you've got a special motivation and special areas of knowledge, there's no such thing as a job waiting for you. Because the perfect job for you will be the place where you will be appreciated fully for who you are, giving the best of what you have within you already. So in fact, you will, you're going to meet people who are going to need you, and you will create this job together. That's what will happen. That's what happens most of the time, to be true. Why do I say design? Well, some of you probably did the design sprint. I think so. Raise your hand. OK. All the other ones didn't do. Ah, unlucky you. That was just the year before we started. I'm so sorry. So design is like rendering the intention. Design is building stuff with intention. When you know where you want to go, and you don't know yet how to do it, but you will discover it all along the process. And that's exactly what I suggest you to do, to discover what you're supposed to do all along the process. Are we good? Do anybody, does anybody have already seen this picture before? No? Nobody? Wow. Well, two, three, thank you. I like this notion of Ikigai that I discovered purely random online, which is a definition of a space when you give the best of yourself for a very simple reason, which is that this space is at the encounter of four zones. What you love to do, what people think you're good at, what the world actually needs from you, and what you can be paid for. And what's interesting is at the junction of all these four stuff, is there is an interesting zone into which there is a work for you. Because you will do what you like to do, what people will appreciate, what people need, and what they are ready to trade some value in exchange for. So when you ask yourself, what should I do with my life? What is the perfect job for me? That's a too difficult to answer questions. That's too wide. That's too big. What I suggest to you is that we break down this question into four questions. One about your expertise one about your talents, one about the contributions you can pay, and what about the actions you can take. And what I suggest that we do all together, and I don't have any clue. Can somebody give me the time it is, please? Because I don't have any clue if I'm late or not, or if I'm too early in advance. Thank you very much. Perfect. So, thank you. So I suggest that if we go, we go through a step, we go through a series of exercises about all these four domains, and then later on we will try to identify the kind of jobs that you can do. Is it fine for everybody? I hope so, because you have no choices. I have no, I have no plan B. So what we're going to do is first understand yourself. Then we will go understand others. Then we'll go understand the world. And then we're going to try to change some things. I'm going to tell you the exact same thing three times in a row. I'm going to tell you the exact same thing three times in a row. It's just, for, it's just to be sure that you understand it and just put it very deep into your head. 
At the very first, there is the understanding of your expertises. So there are things in, in life that you like. Why? Why do you like what you like to do? It's a very hard question to answer to because we don't know. Some people, they like jazz. And we say, OK, but why do you like jazz? Because, because it resonates. When I listen to it, it's like I'm understanding it. I can feel it. I like it, but I couldn't explain. It's not a choice. I didn't choose to like something or to not like something. It's like this. There are things I like. There are things I dislike. And there is an interesting um, experiment, thought experiment, that I've been offered a couple of years ago, which actually helped me a lot. And I would like to do with you. So let's just imagine a moment that tomorrow, OK, you will win big at the lottery. You will win 100 million euros. Each and every one of you here, tomorrow, you have earned 100 million euros. Congratulations. They are all yours. No trick. You're rich. You're richer than rich. OK? Then what's going to happen? Let's make a theory. We're going to break this 100 million euros in two. OK? So you're going to just put 50 million euro in the bank. OK? And then you're going to do whatever the F you want of the 50 million remaining. You're going to do all the stupid stuff you always wanted to do. You're going to travel around the world. You're going to meet super interesting people. You're going to party like a rock star. You're going to just you're going to do what you want. Okay, you got a couple of years. Okay, you're going to do. It's just going to be perpetual holidays for two or three years. Okay, you're just going to do everything you always wanted to do. And then you're going to go home, and the your content's going to call you and say, "Well, you know these 50 millions you left in the bank? They are still in the bank, and every year you're going to earn the interest of these 50 millions." And so. What happens is that you're going to be able to live with only the interest. So in fact, you will never have to work a single day more into your life until the end of your life. You will not have to work one day again. And then what's going to happen? You're going to sleep on this and you're going to wake up in the morning and you will be like, you will have partied, you will have relaxed, you will have entertained yourself a lot and you will say to yourself, I want to do something productive here. I want to do something to feel good about doing it, not only just entertain. And you will start doing stuff. Stuff that nobody asked you for. Nobody asks you to do. And it's not about earning money for a living. You will just do stuff because you're this kind of person would do this kind of stuff. Because that's not what you do. That's who you are, after all. So it means that if we fought a moment that we don't need to go into this economical game about trading our time against value, if we were just free, absolutely free, to do whatever we would want, of course, at first, we will do tons of strange and weird stuff. But at the very end, we would end up doing stuff for the inner reward of doing themselves, because that's meaningful for us, first and before everything else. So I want you to think about this for a couple of minutes. If you hadn't to work for a living, what would you spend your time doing? And when no one is asking you to do something, what do you always end up doing anyway? Because you don't have to wait for somebody to ask you for it, to do it. Take one minute and think about it. Time's up. So. An interesting question might be, what can't you help yourself from doing? And people, they talk about passion or hobbies. And I like to talk about obsessions. Because it's way less glamour. It's way less like entertaining to talk about obsessions. Obsessions are these things that you tend to keep on doing all the time. And people say, you're not, you don't have to do all of this. You don't have to go so much into details. You could stop, you could change. And you say, five more minutes, please. And that's things that you can't avoid yourself from doing. And that's very revealing about who you are. Because that defines you. What you deeply love and what you can stop yourself from doing defines you deeply. It's even more true in a gang of friends. So when you're in gang of friends, there are people like they tell jokes all the time and they entertain the group and they make everybody laugh. Why so? Is it a stand-up comedy? As I like... Earning some money at the very end? No, of course not. 
Now, what happened is like, there are these kind of people who like to put people at ease and love and just make them love. There are some people who are like nerds. They like learning tons of stuff about everything and they like to share their passion and inner interests. And they like, like living encyclopedias. Okay? And they know everything about a certain topic and they can stop themselves from sharing their knowledge. Because they like that. Nobody asks them to do it, but they do it anyway. Because they are this kind of people. And what I want to illustrate is just that you tend to belong, you, don't, you tend to behave a certain way when you're interacting with other human beings. And you tend to do it without having anybody having asked you to do it. You do it because you don't even feel about it, but you do it. And so, when you want to understand deeply things about yourself, things you don't take the time to notice, well, there are a couple of things that you can do to understand where your expertise, expertise comes from. And the first thing you can do is watch yourself. What does that mean? It means take the time to think about what you especially enjoyed into your life because that's something we never take the time to. And that's very easy to do. You just take your smartphone and you make an alarm, okay? And when you go to bed, you take two minutes and you just think about a simple question like, why did I appreciate it today, really? What was the best moment of my day? Why? Why did I appreciate it to do? And you're just looking, you're like learning stuff about yourself. You're just interrogating yourself about what you liked. You want to understand, you want to look closer about what you're doing and you want to try to understand deeper what are your true motivation here. The second thing you can do is trying to understand yourself. So you can go through tests, you can go through a lot of processes in order to better understand your triggers, your motivation, what you're seeking for. Um, tests will never replace an inner knowledge, an inner understanding of yourself. Helps, tests will just help you to go in certain ways Tests will help you to notice things that you didn't notice before. But the answer is not the perfect summary of your personality and no. That's just the beginning in order to help you to better understand what motivates you. There are, for example, the MBTIs that you can go through online for free. I put you the URL here. And I also put you a bunch of other ones that you can test, you can take if you want to. You will have all that within the slide that we gave you at the very end. And of course, is it fine for everybody? And of course, when you understand yourself and when you watch yourself and you understand where your motivation comes from, then you can start to embrace yourself. What do I mean by that? I mean, do not only know who you are and what you like to do, just assume it. Come out. Be 100% okay with that. So be the kind of person who will go to people and say, in this group work, do, let's do this. Doing this, okay, just in this project, can I take care of this part? If you want me to work well, can I deal with that? Because if you give me something else, I won't be good. But if you give me that, I will take special care of it because I want it to be well done. So just seek for opportunities just to keep on doing stuff that you like to do and to let people just give you the stuff that you are interested in to doing because it excites you, it turns you on, it makes you want to dedicate more time and effort into the realization of it. Okay? And so, let's talk about it for a moment. So, let's try to complete this sentence. In your life, you feel really alive when you do something, or you can spend a lot of time doing something just for the pleasure of the activity in itself. Take a minute and try to think about special things that you especially like into group projects, into any kind of things that you do within your life. So, now it's time to talk about your talents. And from a very weird perspective, talking about your talents means understanding others. And that's something that's not very intuitive for us. And in order for you to make it explicit, I will take my favorite examples that we all like, love and veneer into this room. So let me introduce to you Beyonce. Why? Is Beyonce talented? Hmm? She's what? She runs the world. That's a good answer. I like this one. Why is she talented? Why? Why is Beyonce talented? What define her talent? She what? She relates to a lot of females. Tell me. She relates to a lot of females. True. True. Absolutely. Exactly. That's one part of the answer. 
So why is Beyonce talented? Thank you for your answers. That's exactly that. Why is Beyonce talented? Yeah. She's a successful artist and businesswoman. All these reasons are about the inner strength of Beyonce and what she does, what she does. But why is she talented? And that's, the answer is stupid. And you will be disappointed by the answer, but think about it for a second. She's talented because we think that she's talented. There is nothing in itself which defines the talent of Beyonce. Beyonce has tons of gifts and she's very good at what she's doing. But we decide that she is different. We decide that we like what she does. We decide that we like her work because her work talks to us. Because we like to see and to appreciate what she does. And because of this appreciation, we find that she's talented. How do we define talent? You see somebody doing something and you say, I would not be able to do it. And that's talent. So talent is a very variable definition because there's no such absolute thing as talent. Talent is just, when I watch that, I really do appreciate what she or he does, and I would never feel able to reproduce the same. And that's talent. That's why people look through you and they say, wow, what you do has a lot of value to me. I recognize it. Thank you for doing it, by the way. And I would not feel very trustative about myself doing it. And it's not easy, of course, to recognize your talents. Why? Why is it not easy to recognize your talents? You're totally dead. It's too hot in here. So, why is, that not, why is it not easy to recognize your talents? It has, other pe it has to be other people telling you that you have them. Absolutely true. And why in itself is it hard for you to recognize your own talent? Because you know what's right. Huh? You know what's right. You know what's right. Absolutely. It's just, that's funny. Most of the time when you do what you like and what you're good at, you don't perceive this as a constraint or as an effort. You do it because you like doing it. You do it because you like to be into this kind of situation. And so what's super funny is you do it without even thinking about it. So you don't have the inner sensation of being talented. In, instead, most of the time, if you have a very talented friend into like a, a sport or anything or a dance, and you just say, oh my God, you dance so well. Oh my God, this was such an amazing performance. What does this friend will answer to you? What will he or she will answer? Uh, not so, I wasn't so good today, right? Well, I failed at this. Of course, they, don't, they see only what they felt. Have you noticed that? You go to very talented people, famous people, people you like and appreciate for what they're doing, and they say, oh my God, you did that so good. And what will they say? Well, oh, I was not in good mood today. No, it's not, I'm not happy with my performance. I felt at this moment. I'm sure everybody noticed it. What does that mean? It's so natural for them, and it's so obvious that they are doing that they are not even able to notice that most of the people around them, they are not able to do it. And what defines talent is not only your inner ability to do stuff, is you're into an environment where not so many people actually can do what you do. And that's why these people recognize what you do and you say, my God, how do you do that? If I had to do the same stuff, it would take me dozens of hours. How do you do that so fast? And you say, my God, I was so slow. I did it without thinking about it. I did something else. I was watching Netflix at the same time. I could have done it twice faster. Do I have to tell this person? That's talent. And you don't, oh, by the way, you don't choose to be talented or gifted. What does that mean? If 10 different people come to you and say you're gifted into something, you're gifted. Don't tell me bullshit about I don't feel ready, I'm not sure. No, no. If 10 people come to you and say you're gifted into this, you're gifted. You didn't choose. People choose that you're talented into something. What does that mean? It means that to understanding the talents that others perceive in you, there are different ways that you can process. First, you can go through all the letters, all the emails, the text, the WhatsApp, the whatever you young people use today to communicate, where people thank you for your job. When people take two minutes to thank you for your job, for the job you've done, it means something. It means that these people couldn't stop noticing what you've done and just felt obliged, felt good to take 30 seconds to say thank you for today. Thank you for this moment when you did this. And that's somebody who finds you talentous about something. Something else you can do, and that's a very good practice that m French, we French people are very bad with it, is feedback. Feedback is not about collecting compliments. 
Feedback is just going to the people you've been fortunate to work with and just to ask them a simple question, which is, when we worked together and when you had the opportunity to appreciate my contribution, what was I doing that was important for you? What is this thing that maybe I wasn't even conscious that I was doing right, but it really helped you? What is this thing I should keep on doing and cultivate and try to do it more intentionally? And people will surprise you. I can swear to you that you don't have any idea about what people are able to find in you because you don't know, because you never asked. And suddenly you will realize that this thing you do without even thinking about it, because it seems logic, it seems normal, it can add a lot of value to the life of many people. Don't try to become somebody different, just try to notice what you do already and how you help people within their life. I can tell you the tons of information to get here. And of course, once you have collected people thanking you and once you've asked what you should cultivate and how you're good into the interaction you have with other people in your team, you have the right to use that. That's called recommendations, by the way. And very few people use it, but it's not bragging, saying that people particularly appreciated your contribution into this project. It's not bragging about having recommendation letter, but not basic recommendation letters that people do because well, you were the student and they liked you. No, real people who worked with you and say, well, when she was doing that, she was so good at it. And really, that's really an asset for your team. You definitely should consider hiring her. And that's crucial because that's not you talking about yourself. That's other people saying, she's worth it. He's worth it. She's good at it. They're doing great. And you want to collect that because it will give you trust. Trust that you can't afford to give to yourself because you will never see yourself through somebody else's eyes. So, you take a minute and ask yourself, is there something for you that people come to you and compliment you about? What do people tend to appreciate into the way to work collaboratively? What do you succeed quite naturally without having to force yourself? What do people thank you and congratulate you about? Take a minute. And now you're at it. Let's ask ourselves immediately another question. Identify five people you appreciated working with and you're gonna ask feedback to tonight, not tomorrow. Tonight, coming back home, you will write like free text message or emails or Facebook message or whatever and you will just ask to these five people, I really appreciate it to work with you. By the way, when we work together, is there something that you especially enjoyed about the way I work and the way I contributed to the project? Identify these five people and write down their name now. Okay, so what I will give, the advices I will give to you right now worth if and only if you did the two first steps. If you didn't do the first steps, don't bother doing the next ones. The order is important. So ask questions about what you want and what's important for you. Ask questions about what people appreciate within the way you work and what you contribute to projects. And when you are pretty sure about that, when you feel worthy enough, when you feel confident enough, when you have things to say about yourself, things that you patiently collected by yourself or with the help of other ones, then go to the next step. The next step is about your way to contribute and it's about your understanding of the world. What does that mean? It means that if you want to work into a certain sector, if you want to work within a certain area, you absolutely don't have to wait to be within it in order to learn stuff about it. Every time you meet somebody working into the profession you want to do, ask to them what are the books they are reading. Ask them about the magazines they are reading, ask them about the newsletters they are subscribed to. You want to read. You want to learn, you want to watch videos, you want to have a background culture, you want to have, you want to nourish, to, uh, <coughs> you want to feed the inner interest you have for this sector, you want to know stuff about it. Why so? Because if you start to learn about stuff now, in six months, when you will look for an internship, you will have things to say. Because you will have been reading, you will know about what happened and you will know about what you're supposed to know. And the people in front of you, they will not have the uh, feeling 
that uh, you just learned about the job opportunity two days ago and you are like faking the interest for something. You will have authentic things to give in order to demonstrate that you learn. So do your own work. And then, once you're ready, go and meet people. How, do you, how are you supposed to meet people who do what you want to do or who should help you knowing it? Well, it's pretty easy, by the way. You identify the sector you want to work into, you identify the kind of job you're interested in, and then you meet these people, and this time you will be able to ask them something unusual, something they are not able, something they don't hear a lot. This thing is the next one. You're going to come to them, and you're going to say, <clears throat> Hello, let me introduce myself. This is the kind of person I am. This is what I like to do. This is the kind of contribution I like to give into the project I worked into. This is the kind of things I like to perform. This is the kind of things I feel enjoying myself to do. Okay? Oh, by the way, do you know somebody like me? Now I explained to you pretty well what kind of people I am and what I like to perform and when I gave you opportunities to understand which kind of contribution I like to do and to give to other people, then is there anybody in your entourage? Is there anybody in your company? Is there anybody, anybody around you who's like similar to me? And then this person will make you a huge gift. She or he will use brain and say, do I know somebody like this person? And she will say, oh yeah, of course I know somebody like you. We got somebody in the company. I never understood the job of this person. His name is Mark. Her name is Janet. And you should meet this person. And then you will get in touch with this person. You're going to meet her or meet him. And suddenly you're going to just meet yourself 10 years later. You're going to meet somebody exactly like you. Somebody who's like excited by the same thing. Somebody who likes to contribute to the same project. And you would never have been able to find it by yourself. Because it's not about the job title. It's not about anything that you can read on the curriculum vitae. What you will do is you go to people who work in the field and you say, hello. Thank you for giving me three minutes. This is who I am. I did my own works. I know what excites me. I know what I want to contribute to. This is what I do. This is what people love about my work and love about what I give. Do you know somebody who seems like me? Is there anybody in the company who would like has the same motivation and makes the same kind of contribution? And then you let the people make the work for you. And that will be an amazing journey when you will meet tons of new people that you will never have been able to identify by yourself. And these people will learn a lot about you because they are like you. So you will understand each other. If you go here and you click on Recherche Avancée, you will have the opportunity to appreciate that within the school alumni database we have 19,422 members. I'm one of them. And if you click on more criterions, then you will have the opportunity to seek for any alumni you want by any kind of criterions you want. So take the time to explore the database because these people made your school and these people will always have five minutes to answer to you. If, please, and only if you don't come with questions like, hello, I don't know you. Well, first, hello. I don't say anything, I hide, you, I hide you on LinkedIn. This I don't take, nobody takes. Or second thing, even better, hello, we don't know each other, we never met, what am I supposed to do with my life? How do you want me to know what you should be doing with your life? I don't have any clue, okay? So what I want you to write down is, hello, I noticed that you work into this sector. I notice that my interests are this and I like to contribute to this kind of project. I'm very enthusiastic about this and this and I want to deliver this kind of shit. Do you know anybody like me? Could you recommend me to anybody I could meet and I should meet in order to better understand the job? And then I will take 30 seconds in my brain and I will say, well, okay, she looks like Melanie. And I will say, well, Melanie, here is, okay, and... She will tell you about what she likes and you will, have, you will have met somebody who will mentor you and will learn you more about the jobs you want to do. But that's what I expect from you as an alumni. I will never have the answers you don't have. So come to me when you're ready. Come to me when you know what you want me to bring to you. Because I will not be able to think about what I might bring to you. I don't know you. Help me to know you. Tell me who you are. Tell me what you like. Tell me what you, who you want to meet. Tell me what you want to learn. 
And then I will be able to look into my inner network and say, okay, I will connect her with him with, and that's all. And that's how I can help you the best. There is also a startup I help. It's called myjobglasses.com. And there are people like just creating profiles. It's more or less like Facebook and offering you to contact them to ask any question you might have about their job or the company for free. So if you are too afraid because you always fear to bother people and it's not never a good time and all people, they will turn you down and people, they will not answer, use this platform because this platform is made for this. And the people on this platform, they are like, is are here and they are like here for, to answer to your question. That's the only reason they are here for. So you might want to use this system. And of course, what a surprise. Once you better define what kind of contribution you want to meet, you want to do, sorry. And once you define and met people which helped you to meet other people more specialized into what you like, of course, don't wait for the internship position. Don't do that. Now, contact me and say, hello, I understood what you do and I'm understanding who am I and I would like the opportunity to make a contribution. Is there any way I can help? And I, I didn't know if you consider it, but People always accept free help. Have you noticed that? By offering you to help in any kind of situation, I used it a lot. You can literally come in any kind of building, any kind of company, just by offering your help. Asking this simple question, how can I help you? But this question works if and only if you're able to say, hello, I am this person. Hello, that's what I like to do. Hello, that's the talent that people think I have. Is there anything I can do to help? And then the people, they can use their brain and put you somewhere and say, oh, he might or she might appreciate doing this. And that's opportunities. That's how you meet people. So complete the following sentence. Who do you want to help? In which kind of sectors do you want to work? Who do you want to meet to offer your help? Okay, try to describe these kind of people that you would like to work for. Okay. Actions are very useful once you know three things. Once you know who you are and which kind of person you are and what really turns you on and what excites you. Once you know which kind of contribution you seem to add into the project and why people do like what you do. And once you've met people within the world you want to join, which can inform you about the talents and the skills and the expertise and the readings that you need to cultivate in order to deliver what you want to bring with your work, then and only then, go, execute actions. Why so? Because these three first steps will help you to do not everything, not to answer to 500 internship positions. That's stupid, don't do that. Don't send 500 times the same mail of answers to any internship position, doesn't work this way. Instead, cultivate and pick the people that you will go to in order to have your job, because now you know. Now you know what you deliver, now you know what these people, who these people are, now you know what these people expect, and now you can start to try to make a difference and to find this position you seek for. So it's time to take actions. In order to take actions, you have to understand something fundamental about your future work. In the 20th century, the Fordism, which has been the economic miracle of the 20th century, created the factory. A factory is a place when you don't have to think. A factory is a place where job processes are so well written down that they can take you, they can replace you by somebody else, and if somebody is doing the instructions exactly precisely, nobody will notice the difference. That's called quality, by the way. Quality is your ability as an organization to keep on delivering always the same stuff, and whatever, whoever did it doesn't count because the thing is always respecting this standard, this criterion, these norms. That's an old definition of a job. That happened, that will not happen anymore, and you, won't, you will have less and less jobs like the left ones. Instead, you will have more and more jobs like the right ones. What are these kind of jobs? These kind of jobs are pretty special because basically it's somebody coming to you and saying, you need to reach this target, you need to deliver this stuff, we need this working, deal with it. Find a way. Nobody will be able to explain what you are supposed to do because nobody has a clue, by the way. And that's what you pay. You are here 
to find a way to deliver the stuff asked. And people will come to you and say, find a way. Do that. Deliver that with due time. No. Find a solution. And what does that mean? It means that it will be a job that you're going to do and invent at the same time. It will, you will never be sure to do exactly the right thing. You will, not, you will never be sure first day of everything you're supposed to do in order to deliver day 45. You will learn it on born. You will learn it doing it. And you will be paid for that, by the way. Because there is a secret. There is a secret that all the boss in the world don't want you to know. And this secret is that nobody knows how to do your work, by the way. Nobody. Why so? So that's a Tumblr story. I paste it here. You can read it later by yourself. So I sum it up to you. This is a young person working as an intern into a big corporation who basically said, everybody around me at the corporation thinks that I'm an Excel genius. I'm like a number genius, okay? So they give me things and data to crush and strange formula to do. And at the very end, I have to come with a results and I do stuff with Excel and they all think that I'm like a super nerd, like a brain, okay? But of course, no, that's not what I learned at school. So what do I do? When I'm asked to do something, I figure out what I'm supposed to do and then what do I do? I go on Google and I Google stuff and I go on YouTube and I watch DIY videos and I find tutorials, and I find instructions, and I try to build myself a process in order to deliver the stuff. And I've been honest, and I told to these old people, hey, no, 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 I'm not a genius at all. I'm looking on the internet. You ask me something, and I go on the internet, and I find the resources, and I find the solution. And he say, I've been super surprised, because these people, they didn't say, oh my god, you're such a fraud. Instead, they say, you're amazing. We don't know where to find these tutorials. We wouldn't know what to type in Google to find your resources. You take these initiatives and you manage to find a solution by yourself. And they say, they're even more admirative than they were at first. It's a no sense. Because what people will appreciate is not you knowing everything about everything. That will never happen. Nobody existed this way. What people will appreciate about you is you got talents and you got skills and capacities and they come to you and they say, we need to build that, we need to improve that, we need to better do this. We don't have a clue about what we're supposed to do. Can you find a solution and can you try it and tell us if it works? And that will be your job. And you will say, I don't have a clue about what I'm supposed to do it, but I will find. And you will take. And then after you will have nightmares. But that's part of the game. And that's your future job. That's what you will be doing. And what's funny is there are many ways to be indispensable into a company. And it's not about being good at everything because nobody is good at everything. For example, you can be an extraordinary interface with customers. You're like a super sales rep. You go to people and they trust you and they like you, okay? And you like them and like they want to get connected with you and they don't want to change of accounts so you can keep taking care of them. And like you, you do sales and everybody likes you and you do your results and that's fine. Or you can like to solve unexpected problems. My, my business partner, my associate is really like, like to solve unexpected problems. So Matthias, some of you met him. Some days he say, okay, I come back in five days and he go in his apartment and he read 200 books and he come with an Excel spreadsheet of 17 tabs and he say, I cracked it. And he show me how we're gonna do. And that's why we pay him so expensive, by the way. Um, there are people, they make, thing, they make sure that things are done. So what do they do? They just say, well, I'm sure that it's gonna be done. What does that mean? There are 200 contractants. Okay, we got three months. We got like five millions to spread and budget and project management and gain chart. Oh my God, I feel so excited, bring the stuff. And they deliver big projects and they make sure that everybody deliver on time. So we are sure to deliver it. Okay, there are some people, they understand and lead the community. So they go to the customers, they go to the people and they're able to talk to them and they're able to make them come together and to do stuff, okay, and to animate a tribe. And there are people who are super good inside the building with the people of the team and they inspire people and they are excellent manager and they lead the collective performance. There's no such thing as somebody being good at everything. It's impossible. You can be a super manager and a super sales rep and a super technician and it's, not, it's no sense. You will be known for one thing, maybe two. One thing that you do good. One thing which is exactly what the organization needs and you are this person and you are here to deliver that. And that will be well enough. That will be well enough to be this person. Trust me. Because our goal isn't to touch everyone. 
Our goal is to touch someone, to change someone, just one person. If you get good at it, do five, then do 100. But stop worrying about everyone. Everyone doesn't matter. Because you don't want that, you don't want everybody to like you. You don't need everybody to like you. How many people do you need to like you? One, the recruiter. The person who's gonna recruit you, your boss. That's the only, she's the only person that you want to like to. One person, one person will trust you and say, okay, I give you an opportunity, deliver something. One person, and that's enough, okay? So you're not for everybody and you don't want everybody to like you. You're somebody special with special skills and talent and what you want is people that need you, recognize you and say, we need that. We believe that you can bring it to us. Do you want to take the challenge? And you will like be super fearful and that you will do it anyway. You will be super frightened, trust me on this one, but you will do it and it will be good. And you will do it all together again and you will be known for that and that's, not, that's a reputation. And that's what will come. To do that, there are a couple of tools. I'm gonna to give you 15 of these tools. Are we ready? Yeah. yeah, we are super enthusiastic and young. Are we ready? Yeah. <laughs> Always do the backup yourself. So, <clears throat> the first thing you have to admit is the only thing which unites all the human being in the world is the time. We all have the same time. One second for somebody here is one second for somebody here. If you choose to invest this second into learning a skill, you are not learning all the other skills in the world. You will never be knowing about everything. You will never be able to do everything. You will instead pick up what you want to be good at. So don't try to like, if you're super good, I shouldn't say that in this school, but I don't care. If you're super good into a class and you're barely good at other one, don't spend your time becoming average. Spend your time to become excellent into the class you're already good at. Because later, your job will be to be excellent into this. And all the average want, they won't count anymore. So don't try to be average. Try to be good into what you already like. Invest wisely the way you spend your time. Well, I pass on this one. Because, yeah, time is like the most precious assets we have. Because money, you spend it, you lose it, you win it. Time, you spend it, you don't win it. You have one minute, you spend one minute. This minute is gone forever. So choose wisely how you spend your time. Don't try to learn everything. Learn what matters for you and for the people that you want to contribute with. There's also a very good technique I use. This changed my life. His name Getting Things Done. And that's really helped you to prioritize the stuff and to help you to focus on the right things at the right time. It really changed. I, I couldn't be a freelance if I hadn't this technique with me. I use it all day. What does that mean? It means that every project starts with a due date. So you say, when I will be grown up, I will do things, and you don't do anything because this moment is not defined. But you say, by the, the 5th of March, I will have to do something, and now you're stuck because it's the 5th of March, so you have to deliver it. So start with the delivery date. What does that mean? If you want to learn something, if you want to really learn something, there is, there is only... According to my point of view, there is only one thing to do. Find something to do, a way to contribute, commit, and say, I will deliver it on due date. And after you're stuck, and after you're supposed to find a way to do it. And you will have to learn it. You will have to learn it before a due date, because if you didn't learn it, you will not be able to do it. And if you're not able to do it, you can't deliver, and so you can't keep your promise. So start by the delivery date. Every project that you want to put in your life, first thing to do, define the date. Say this will be done by this date. And this will help you to keep prioritized on this thing. Commit, write down your goals. Don't say I will do it. Don't say it to me, I don't believe you. Write it down. Write it down on paper. Say to me, I will deliver this marketing plan by the 17th of April and then stick it to your door publicly. Put it on LinkedIn, put it on Facebook and I will believe you. Write down, write down your goals, commit, say I will do it. Okay, and then after you're stuck because you promise and people wait and you don't have the choice anymore and you have to deliver something good enough. What is good enough? Good enough is all the time you had to deliver this shit. But you don't have to do it on your own. So you can seek support, find nerds, find people like you. 
Find people like you who like to do the same stuff and make strange Tupperware meeting when you meet each other. Football supporters do exactly the same, by the way, okay? It's about identifying people who get the same belief and the same excitation, and you share a space and you share your passion and you give yourself your advices. That's called a, um, a mastermind, by the way, if you want to get information about it, it works pretty well. Because the day you don't have the motivation, other people will have it. And the day they won't have the motivation, you will have it for them. This is the fifth Solvay Congre, 1927. 19 future Nobel Prize. Double Nobel Prize, the only woman, Marie Curie. Good for her. What did happen at the Congress Solvay? 29 people, 17 Nobel Prize. How so? No sense. Statistically, statistically, how come? Well, most of the people who were at the Solvay Congress didn't have the Nobel Prize yet. They went to the Congress Solvay, then they win the Nobel Prizes. What does that mean? Don't wait to be good to find good people to teach you. Find people like you. Find people like you online or in real life and just attend to events. Go to people, help each other to deliver stuff. You will learn from each other so much further that you will learn by yourself. Surround yourself with people you estimate. Identify the opportunities. That's something very important. If you don't know what you have to do in your life, if you don't know what you want to do, then you will be considering any business opportunity. It's especially true if you want... Do some people want to create... Uh, is there people here who want to launch a company, go as a freelance or create his or her own activity? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good. Twice more than the last year. Okay, listen. Everybody listen, but these ten people listen very well. Never pick up a client, a client that you didn't decide to choose. Because you choose your clients, they don't choose you. Not all the opportunity works the same. The thing is, you are a certain somebody and you want to achieve a certain task and you're good at certain stuff and you want to have the opportunity to contribute to certain field. So it means that there are opportunities in life that are like metro um, buses, Comment tu dis? subway trains. Opportunities in life, on coupe, on la refait. Opportunities in life are like subway trains. What does that mean? There is one every two minutes. Life is fulfilled with opportunities. You have no clue. There are opportunities, a, a day like today, with all these alumni in the school, there are like hundreds of opportunities traveling around you in the air, but you don't see it. Why don't you see it? Because you don't look for them. You can only recognize opportunity. If you are seeking to meet certain kind of people working in a certain field, and if by accident you are in a cafe and you hear somebody saying something about this sector, then you can turn to these people and say, what did you just say? But you know that you're seeking for this. Otherwise, that would just be noise. Okay? So you will have tons of ways to go and to meet people and to just people will come to you and ask stuff. But you, you have time. You let the subway train pass. You wait for the good one. You're sick for the good one. You know which one it is and you are able to recognize it, to identify it and to recognize it. You don't have to actually be good at something to deliver stuff. You can fake. So this gentleman here that some people may have heard about, he won a Victoire de la Musique one year ago for his record. At the very beginning, it was launch he was launching himself on MySpace. You're too young to remember MySpace. It was before Facebook, basically. And uh, he was doing videos, video clip, poor, terrible video clip that he was producing himself and directing himself and just making the montage itself and making the music itself and performing into itself. So he was basically doing everything and there are terrible video clips comparing to what he does today. But he doesn't care. Why? Because when he launched on MySpace, 12 years ago, maybe more. Then people appreciated what he does and then people start to follow him and then he had opportunities to perform and even more and even more and he gained notoriety and he earned money and little by little he made a record, then another one, then another one. I put you also the link, the URL link of a story I love about a designer which says that fake design yield real results in his life. What does he mean? He say, when I was young, when I was a teenager, it's not my story, that's his story, I love 
to draw um, record albums. Pochette. Huh? Cover, thank you. I love to do record cover. And so there, are, there was this band I love, like Radiohead or something, and I hated the cover of that track, okay? So I was like drawing it, and when internet came, I just put that online. This fake record cover of real band. And what happened then? Real band came to me and say, oh, we are a band, we are beginning, we don't have any money, we would use your help to have a cover. Would we draw a cover? Because we like your style. And so he said, I started to draw real cover for real band because I've been identified because I was drawing fake cover for real band. So don't wait to, to have an opportunity. Start to deliver things, start to show your work, and real people will come to you and ask you to do the same for them. And that's how you will find your first opportunity. Fake it. You don't have to have a real project to work about. Just work and show us your work. The rest will follow. And if it's not motivating enough, help somebody. So commit. Find somebody who's in trouble because he needs a marketing plan, somebody to raise money for his foundation, somebody to help him, I don't know, to close a deal, anything, anything you like to do. And just offer your help and say, I'm going to help you for free. Because it will be an opportunity for me to learn everything that you do count. You have no idea about how important it is. It's just, I probably put it in the next slide, yeah. So that's how I met my business partner. So I was into Paris streets and there was this poster about help wanted for an event. Benevol, no money. So I just went there and uh, we discussed and I said, oh yeah, I can make a workshop for you. It was on the MIT Media Lab, it was super exciting. And we were like brainstorming and all. And then the door opened exactly like this. <laughs> Bonjour Beatrice. And Matthias went into the room, and Matthias said, who's this guy? And Matthias, he was helping for free as well as a producer of the event. And then we laughed together, and then we went and had a couple of beers, and now five years later, we're business partners, and we run a company. What does that mean? If I didn't want to help for free, or if he, or if he didn't want to help for free, we wouldn't have been in this event, we wouldn't have met. How do I know we wouldn't have met? Because that's pretty crazy. When we met and we just compare our LinkedIn profile, we had nobody in common. Not a single person. We didn't know anybody in common. Do you just realize that the person I'm doing all my business with, that I'm running my company with, that I'm spending most of my day with, we had nobody in common. There was no opportunity for us to meet otherwise. We just met because we were at the right place at the right time because we both decided to help for free somebody. So if you like, if you have a field of interest, if there's somewhere you want to go to help, go. Because you will meet other people who are here to help as well. And there are a lot of chances that you guys are similar. That you guys look the same and talk the same language and have a lot to bring to another one. You will never stop the fear. Fear is something in your brain to avoid you to die. So that's very useful on an evolutionary plan, and you have it, and you will always have it. People who don't fear anything, most, they die young. Most of them, they die young because like, they drive too fast. They take risk. They take way too much risk because they don't perceive the risk, because they don't fear. Fear is useful. Fear teach you something. Fear teach you this might not work. You're doing something and you fear. You fear to be a fraud. You fear to be a failure. Your brain say, do you know how to do that? Do they know that you don't know how to do that? How are you supposed to do that? And fear is good, it's a good indicator. It's saying, okay, you don't know how to do that. And well, don't ignore the fear. Recognize it, appreciate it, and say, okay, I go. I go, I do it anyway. Okay, this might, this might fail, this might fail. But it's not important because it's new, because it's something else. This is an opportunity to grow, an opportunity to learn. Let fear drive you, but don't let, don't fear, don't let fear control you. And that's very funny because that's a strategy uh, I called, well, rest in peace, Julien Lepère's strategy. I don't know if you recognize this guy or I definitely have to change of slide. So for the non-native speaker and for the non-French people, Julien Lepère was a very famous presenter of like this, you know, a trivia quiz on TV where he asks questions like in Geoparty and people push the button and give an answer. And what's interesting is that if you want to win to this game, there is a strategy, there is a pattern you have to do. What is, how, how are you supposed to do if you want to win 
into this kind of trivia games, what are you supposed to do? You push on the button, which is good, and there is a special condition. Huh? You think fast? It's even better than this. You push on the button, and you, know you don't have the answer the moment you push the button. So the guy gives a question, and then your brain says to yourself, you know it. I don't have it now, but I know that you know it, I will have it in three seconds. And so you push the button, and you don't know the answers. And then the presenter says, yeah, what's your question? And then you have two seconds to think, and you say, oh, this is this. And now you have the answers. But if you had to wait to know the answers, you would have pushed too late, because somebody else would have pushed. What does that mean? In life, don't wait to be, don't want the, don't wait to be sure. Don't wait to have the answers. When somebody gives you an opportunity and your brain say, 50-50, you succeed, 50-50, you fail, you will figure out, you will find a way, I know that you're able to do it, do it. Do it. Just do it. Take it. Take it. It's on me. Push the button and say, I'm going to figure out, I'm going to sort this thing out. Because I trust enough in my capacity to find a solution. There is a wonderful person named Amanda Palmer, she's great, and she's made a commencement speech called The Fraud Police, which is hilarious, by the way, saying that you will feel a fraud all your life. The Fraud Police is a fake organization who come to your door and knock and say, we know who you are. We know that you are not the person you pretend to be. We know that you know nothing. So, for example, if you're a brain surgeon and you like, have super high skills and everybody estimates you and you're there into the operatory block with your knife, you're ready to go into somebody else's brain, pretty intense, if you want my opinion, and then you think, do they know that I lost the keys of my car and I'm not able to find them since three days? My God, is, can somebody stop me from doing this, please? And you will feel the fear all your life, and that's good. Fear is a good indicator. Fear is teaching you that you are doing something new. When you don't fear anything, it's because you know it's going to work. And if you know it's going to work, you're just doing the same thing all over again. Fear is nice. Recognize the fear, but don't let it drive you. And this led us to the training. So test, pop quiz. <clears throat> Rocky 2, a classic. If you take the training scene in Rocky 2 over a two hours movie, and if you accumulate all these scenes together, how long does the training last? Five minutes, absolutely. Why so? Because training is boring. That's not what people want to show. People want real people fighting, and one might win, and one might lose. You never show people practicing. I told this joke to Marina Rollman, whose name is Ingo. And what's very funny about it is just that we put too much importance into the final performance and not enough in the training because training is not sexy. But you will do it and you will do it again and you will do it again. And at the beginning, and in 10 years, I can, I can, I can, I can swear you, in 10 years when you will meet your, when you will just read your first work or look your first work, you will be ashamed. And you will want to burn the copies and everybody forget what you did, but it will be too late. And the first, work, the first work was necessary for the second work to come, for the third work to come. And after a certain amount of time, then, of course, it becomes natural, it becomes obvious. It's not because it was, it's because you practiced. And there are barely other ways to perform. Which means that the opportunity to start, when, when is the right moment? When is the right moment to try something new? When is the right moment to give yourself permission? When, when will you feel ready enough to do something, to dare to take an opportunity, to seek for an opportunity? Well, the answer is yesterday. The best moment was yesterday. So don't wait for it, it's already passed. The moment to start was yesterday, so you already started, just you don't know it. So now go and deliver. Give yourself the permission. Because we all are tempted that an external authority, a mentor, somebody that we admire, somebody who knows, will come to us and say, you're ready. We put his hand on your shoulder and say, you've been through the process. No, no, you know, no, you're one of us. No, you, but nobody will come, nobody will decide that you are ready. You are the only person who will decide that you are ready. So give yourself the permission. You don't take that much risk that you think. Just give yourself the permission to try. Which led us to the role of failure. And talking about failure, I have to mention Elon Musk. Elon Musk is a stupid somebody who gets rich 
by being into PayPal and not spending all the money into launching stuff in space with SpaceField. And everybody is laughing at Elon Musk because it's not working. And of course, everybody say, well, Elon, you failed so much. And what, do, what does Elon Musk, was, oh, sorry, what does Elon Musk answer? I'm not failing. I learn. Because honestly, people came to him and say, because we have all the short-term memory, people come and say, Elon, my dear Elon, we are the NASA. We are the big guys. We've been doing this all our life. Okay, we know what it is. So don't try to imitate us. It's way too hard. Stay at your pace, okay? That's fine. And of course, NASA tend to forget that success didn't happen overnight. And when you launch stuff into space, do you really believe that anybody arrived to launch a rocket just once for the first time? It's just amazing. I mean, if you go through YouTube, there are literally dozens of hours of failed rocket launching. Rocket launching is half a century. It's just people have been practicing and trying to do it again and again and again, and they failed. And little by little, failure after failure, they became better at it. And if you look at the Elon Musk performance, of course, it's poor. But he learned so much faster than the NASA learned at first. He learned faster than them today. He might be not so bad tomorrow. He's learning. You don't have to find all the solution yourself. A lot of people are on your way and will be ready to help you. But this is a story. You are at home in your apartment. This is the evening, OK? And somebody knock on the door. And you're opening the door, and then there is this gentleman you never met, okay? She's like a clean on himself, etc. And, and he says, hello, we don't know each other. Uh, what should I prepare for dinner tonight? And you, you put your foot next to the door, and you say, I don't know, you know, you try to close, because that's weird. You don't know, right? Well, another story, you're at home, somebody's knocking at the door, you open, this is exactly the same gentleman. Okay, And this person says to you, well, we don't know, I'm sorry to interrupt, I'm your neighbor, I just live okay, one level below, I'm with my boyfriend and we are like preparing pancakes and I don't have any eggs and just the supermarket is closed, would you have some eggs in your fridge? And then of course, because you're a civilized, happy neighbor, you will say, of course, and then you're going to open your fridge, you're going to take six eggs, you're going to give to him, say, oh, we'll give them back to you, say, oh, no need, you know, and that's all. What's the difference? This is the same person. In the first case, the person is just asking to you, what am I supposed to do? And you don't know. How could you know? In the second case, the person is saying, I know who I am. I know where I'm going. I need these resources. Can you just lend it to me and give it to me? And it's a few, a few effort. And you say to yourself, of course I can. And you just put ah, three lines in the mail. You say, OK, I'm connecting you with him. Deal with it. And you send it. That's all. When you go to people, know what you want to ask. You have to be able to ask them what you need. They don't have to find it for you. They will never take the time to find it for you. You're way too numerous. Okay? But if you write to me and you say, that's who I am, that's what I want to do, do you have that? Then I will answer. And that's what most of the people think. Oh, by the way, if you come to me and you say that, and I help you, and I never learn about you again, and in three years I receive another mail, and you ask me to help you, what will I do? I will click on the delete button. Because you always have to close. When you ask for people's attention, and people's network, and people's opportunities, the minimum is always closing. So whatever you decide to do, if I give you contacts and you don't use them, if I give you advices and you don't follow them, if finally you change of way of life and you decide to do something totally different, take three minutes. And write me a mail and say, thank you for your time. In the end, after a deep reflection, this is what I decide to do. Goodbye. And I will say, thank you for letting me know that I didn't waste my time. And so, in three years, when you will come back to me, I will be ready to help you again. So always take the time to properly close. You have no idea how important it is. If you want to use network to find job opportunities later, or clients, or contracts, or whatever, always take the time to thank and close with anybody you meet. You have no idea. You're one mail away 
from the people you admire. So this person behind me is somebody very important in my life. His name is Seth Godin. I never met him in person. I read his 18 books. He's got a blog as well. And one day I felt, I don't know, I believe I was drunk. And uh, I say, well, I should write the guy and say that I like his work and I should offer him to translate it in French. And I sent it and, well, Seth is pretty busy and uh, just, uh, well, 18, 18 book bestsellers, uh, marketing award, well, just super a rock star in our world. And three minutes later, I received a mail. And the mail was saying, oh, Remy, you're so nice. Thank you for taking the time. You know, well, I don't accept ongoing translation, but, but if you want to, you can take six to eight articles per year and you can translate them and put them on your blog and that's fine for me. And I say, thank you, man. And since then, I'm doing it. And on my blog, every year, I translate eight of his articles, the best ones, the one I have. And this person is like super busy and I admire his work and his work really helped me to develop as a consultant. And this person takes three minutes. Why so? Because I wrote and I had something to ask, a short request. And so he sent me a short email, four lines, just to say, it's okay for me. So don't fear, people are close. Your generation, I like talking like an old guy, your generation and my generation as well. Even the Pope got a Twitter account. You can contact literally whoever you want in the world. But if you say, hello, what am I supposed to do? Nobody will never answer. If you say, hey, I appreciate your work. I know who I am. I know what I would like to give for free for you. You might be surprised about who's going to answer. And that means that you have to do something which is pretty uncommon in business, which is show your work. In design, we call that a portfolio. When you hire a designer, you will never hire a designer because of the school he or she did. That's irrelevant. You will hire a designer because this person is able to deliver certain kind of deliverables. This person is able to do some web interfaces. This people is able to do some product. This people is able to do some user research or some prototyping skills. And so what you will appreciate is not where they come from. What you will appreciate is what work did they formally do? Which means that it's hard at first because you don't have a lot to show. But it becomes easier and easier because the more opportunities to contribute you have, the bigger the portfolio become. And then after, you go to people and you say, oh, I did this, I did this. And you, even better, when you're into consulting, you say, tell me about your problem. And the people tell you about their problem. And 10 minutes after, you say, it reminds me this thing I did for this client. And you show what you did and say, oh, my God, we, we will need exactly the same thing. And say, I will deliver it for you. Because now you trust me. Because I've been able to show you that I know what I talk about, that I'm able to deliver this stuff. And at first, you all believe that you got nothing. And that's perfectly normal. It's untrue. There's nothing more untrue. That's three years you're here, or two, or one, whatever. You've been into association, you've been into project, you've been into students' project, you've been into tons of projects and opportunities to deliver stuff. Everything counts. If you've been able to schedule a project within an association, it's no matter that it was with an association and you were unpaid. It means that you're able to modelize and deliver the project. Show that to me, please. Don't hesitate to show me your work so I know I can trust you because you're able to show me that you know what you do. Show your work is influence. My definition is influence is your ability to offer me the opportunity to reproduce your results. It means you come to me and you say you're interested into this. This is what I did. This is how I did it. This is the advice I give to you if you want to do the same thing. And it's very unnatural because it's not about keeping secret your knowledge. It's not about not saying to people what you understood. It's about proudly assuming that you know what you tell about and you say, you want to do it? Here is the recipe. Here is the lesson I learned. Here is what I know to do. If, if this is what I suggest and would recommend. And that's preemption. And people just will see that and they will trust you because they will say, this person knows what she's doing. And I trust the advices because this person has been able to demonstrate that she knows what she's talking about. Most of the projects, especially on the web, work only this way. If you're a developer, you will never be hired because you have a developer degree. That doesn't count at all. You will be hired because you will be in an open source project and you will publish the code you develop. And other people will read your code and say, we, we, we will need this person to join the team. We will need somebody like this. And that's how you will find the work. That's how people will contact you to offer you work, by the way. 
So your influence, your ability to demonstrate your value is at the crossover of your ability to help actually people to deliver stuff and to show us how you do. Do it the way you want, I don't care. Do a blog, do a Facebook page, do a WhatsApp account, do, do whatever you want, a Telegram account, do whatever you want. The format is not very important. Just there must be a place somewhere where every time you deliver something valuable, I have to know. It has to be stored there. And if I want to know what you do, of course, you have the right to show that to me. If it's secret, if it's NDA, of course, you don't show it. Okay? But everything that you can show to me about your ability to deliver stuff, I want to know. I want to have a place to see all the work you've done because that's how I will trust you. That's how I went into this organization. Very funny. So what happened with me? I was into this specialist master working with a student, um, design student. And what was funny is um, I was 30 at the time. And the students I was working with, there were like 24. So there was like this little gap, this little difference. And I started to mentoring them because, well, you're the person you are. And after a certain time spent with them, when I left, I just say, wow, I should write an article to say how cool it was to work with them. And I just made an article which was basically just a way to say, goodbye, guys, it was cool. And I just published it and I didn't think about it. And then the phone rang. And somebody here within the organization, Laurence Lambert, who's retired now, told me, oh, Rémi, you're doing some design uh, classes. And I, and I, I in my head, I thought, absolutely not. But I say, yeah, yeah, it happens sometimes. And she say, oh, we're looking for somebody to deliver some design lessons to our students. Could you start in two months? And in my head, I say, I don't have a fucking clue what I'm doing. And then I say, well, of course, of course I can. I have everything ready. And then I turn, I hang up the phone and I scream loud. And then I started to work. And two months later, my school, my, my lecture was ready. And I gave lecture during a couple of years within this organization. What's funny, it's the story doesn't stop then. When I was giving design lectures, I was posting pictures about it, I was talking about it, I was giving advices, and people came to me and said, oh, you give design lectures, cool, we are HEC Paris, we are looking for people giving design lectures. Would you want them? I say, of course. And then the director of the pedagogy came to us and said, oh, we want to redesign the Launchpad startup program, do you want to go in? And I said, of course. And everything started because of an article I published on LinkedIn. It took me two hours. Best return on investment ever. Take two hours. Next time you do something you're proud of, okay, write 1,000 or 2,000 signs saying, that's what I did, that's what I learned, that's cool. Publish it, forget about it, do another one. After a certain time, the phone will ring. The phone always ends up ringing. I even put you a slide share to learn you how to do that. So that will be into the slide I will give to you. Everything I'm telling you as a name is karma business. I like this distinction of business. It means that you are so much worthy than what you believe you are. You are the person you are, and you are your inner thought, and you have the people you're connected to, and there is everything you learn through everything you do, and there are all the opportunities you've heard about. People saying, oh, we're seeking for somebody doing this. Okay? And there's you, and there's the rest of the world. What does that mean? If one day somebody tells you, oh, would you like to join our organization to do that, and you're not interested, what do you do? You say, I'm not this kind of person, I'm sorry, I can't do that for you. But, but I know somebody, I know a fellow student. I know somebody in my network that might be very interested. Let me introduce this person to you, please. And you will give this opportunity to somebody else. What does that mean? You are much more wealthy than what you believe you are. Because everything you read, everything you touch, everything you learn, every opportunities you meet, you can give them to somebody else. These people will not forget you. These people will remind that you had something in your hands which had no value for you and had a lot of value for them and you take two minutes to give to them. The phone will ring. The phone always ends up ringing. We have an amazing technique into the human history thanks to which we can learn from the dead people and we know everything they thought and all the lessons they take sometimes 70 times to learn. Thanks to... Books. Ton of books. People like you learn the same thing. People like you went the same path, the same way. 
They had some learnings, they took the time to write it down in a book. Sometimes it takes them 20 years of their life to be able to write this book, and you, you can read it in five hours, which means that you earn 20 years in five hours. You want to read books, good books, books of people like you explaining what they know, because you want to know as well. Never stop learning. And it's, that's a collection of books I used to prepare this talk, by the way. This one is amazing, especially if you want to write, if you want to give, if you want to contribute and you don't feel ready, read this one. This one is just amazing. All the other ones are pretty good, but if you're afraid about yourself and what you want to give, start by this one. So there's also another one I wanted to add because he had an incredible t title and I discovered it last year. And it really is amazing and you want to start by this one maybe if you don't feel confident enough in yourself. And the subtle title of this book is The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck that you may want to read and that you may enjoy, by the way. That's a recommendation I give to you. That's totally counterintuitive, but if you want to learn something, you want to teach it. Don't wait to know exactly something to teach it. Instead, take a due date, take some people who know less than you, and you have to find a way to explain to them what you know. And then you will have to think about what you're doing, and you will have to write down stuff, and you will have to deliver stuff because you have a due date. And then you will become somebody better, better at doing what you do because you're able to explain it. And that's how actually you learn. If you really want to learn something, learn a new skill, find somebody else you have to teach these skills to two weeks or three weeks after. You have no idea about a fast learner you will be, faster than if you were learning just for yourself. Learn to teach. Everything you learn, learn it like if you had to teach it to somebody else. Take the habit to deliver always the extra mile, the little amount, the little surplus. If you go to this address, you will have it by the end of the show. Then you will have a form, and if you fill it out with your mail, then in a couple of days, we'll send you all the slides, but not only the slides of what we talk. I will send you the link to this presentation that I gave last year about the description and, of course, the blog. And on the blog, every first day, I post articles. Sorry, they are in French right now, but if somebody wants to help me to translate them in English, I take any assistance. And I just deliver what I know, and I deliver what I think might be good for you. It's totally free. I sell nothing, and I will never sell anything related to that. It's absolutely not the point. If you're lazy and you don't want to come and visit my blog every first day, and frankly, I totally understand you, you can even take the time to register to the newsletter. And so automatically, every first day in your mailbox, you will have the last article. We also have a Facebook group. We were two at the very beginning. We are 500 right now. What do I mean? I don't know what you will do with your life. You, will, you know. You, do, you don't even know, actually, what you will do with your life. You know who you are. You know what turns you on. And that's well enough. Don't wait to feel ready. Don't wait to be perfectly sure that you know what you're doing because this day will never arrive. Know yourself, know what people like within yourself into what you're doing and give yourself the permission to try. And meet new people and learn new skills and then keep on learning and doing because that's how later, little by little, you will be led to something bigger. And if you do that, I guarantee you 100% that something is going to happen. Not what you expect. Better. Why? Today, let's say, for example, that you're seeking for a job, okay? And then you go and you read a job profile online. So that's not really the type of job you want to do, but you say, well, I better try to have it. Who knows? And then you will try to find some things into your background which might relate to it in order to show that you know what you do. And then you will have to fake a talk when you will say, oh, I'm so passionate about your job, which is absolutely not true and you will fake to be the right person because you want a job and you don't want to do that. It's a waste of time. It's a waste of time for yourself mostly. Instead, what I suggest you to do is you will come facing somebody and you will say thank you for having me here. That's who I am. That's where I come from. That's the kind of stuff I like to deliver. That's the kind of challenge I like to tackle. You can ask these people. They liked, they appreciated what I did for them. And you can interview them, you can, you can give a phone call, they will know, they will tell you that I'm good at what I do. I understood your problems, I know about your organization, I know what you're seeking for, and I would like to help you because I'm invested into this and I would like to dedicate my time and my energy to your quest in order to help you to reach your goals. Would you consider a collaboration together? 
and that is totally different from any speech that recruiters learn 99% of the day. And people will start looking at you very differently if you're able to bring that to the table. Don't ask to the recruiter what the job is about. Explain to him or her who you are, what you want to deliver, how you want to contribute deeply. And explain that this is an opportunity for them not to miss you. Because you will go anywhere to do it anyway. Because that's who you are. The purpose of everything I gave to you is very simple. It's about to, li to leave your work. Not, to leaving, not only to leave off your work, but to leave it. Because when you will go to work every day, you will keep on being yourself and you will never change. And you better know what you like and what turns you on in order for you to find the right people to give you the right opportunities to be who you are and to deliver great stuff. To really live means to be able to express one's unique individuality, to hone one's strength to the limits while becoming fully part of the human network and contributing to it. That is what living truly means and that is what schools should teach and that is also the ultimate goal of one's work. I lied to you. I lied to you all along the way. Life is a stairway. It is. It's just not existing yet. Every step you take, you make a new one. Every challenge you commit to, you learn something new and you rise. And after a certain moment, when you rise and you're happy about what you're doing, you will take the time just to look behind yourself and to see other people who want to climb. And then you will just give them the hand in order to help them to climb faster. And then you will tell me, but Rémi, if there is no destination, if it doesn't exist, where does this tower lead us ultimately? What is the goal? And then you will just don't bother to be better than your contemporaries or the people who came before you. Every day you will come to work and the only thing you will try doing will be to become a better version of yourself. Thank you for your time.